Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and today it is about dynamic range compression. And it's kind of a what if. What if in the early days of digital, in the early days of CD, first consumer digital format, what if the compression was, was variable, was, was controllable by the consumer? When you play the disc, you could, the CD, you could control how much compression was, uh, was being applied. Now, thinking through this, I would say that the default position probably would have been the maximum amount of compression because most people wouldn't, most normal walking around human beings aren't thinking about compression, right? So to take the safest position, they would apply the maximum compression as the default. And then if you were of the audiophile inclination, you would then be able to reduce the amount of compression down to, well, to, so, to some preset minimum level by the mastering engineer, right? I think this would be, this would have changed everything. The whole way music is heard and appreciated by everybody, but certainly by the audiophile uh, 1%. Oh man, I mean, first of all, the loudness wars, to jump ahead in time, the loudness wars would never have happened. Just, just think about that. I mean, which basically started in the early 2000s, but there has always been compression used in music, certainly in popular music. Compression is part of the sound, and that's kind of the, the problem with this little fantasy is, is it's, it is part of the sound. It's not, it's not a mistake. It's not something they necessarily want to undo, right? So it gets complicated, but I would say, sure, for in cars and in noisy environments, probably the max or a lot of compression would be desirable even by audiophiles, because if you're on the train or the bus or the, even the plane, uh, hearing a lot of minimum compression, meaning more quiet parts of the music, might not be advisable. So yes, compression would be good in those circumstances. But if you're listening at home or in any quiet place, maybe you'd like to dial that down, dial it down all the way. Now, as I'm thinking through this, maybe the mastering engineer's job would be a lot tougher because they wouldn't know what the compression was that the, the, the listener would be exposed to. Um, I don't know how that would work. If you're any mastering out engineers out there, if you could wrap your brain around this idea that the end user <clears throat> would be in control of the dynamic range of the record or the amount of compression being used on the record, chime in, please. Um, and we're talking about overall dynamic range. Now, of course, parts of the recording are always going to be compressed or usually have been compressed, we'll put it that way, vocals, acoustic bass, drum certainly. So there's, compression is, again, it's part of the sound of recording. And I know audiophiles just think it's like the worst thing ever. But as I pointed out from time to time, all of your favorite records, <laughs> if you're listening to pop music at least, or even jazz, have been compressed. So even the ones from the, the golden old days used compression. Led Zeppelin, oh my God. It's out of control. Of course, vast amounts of distortion and tape saturation on those Led Zeppelin records. So I'm getting off the track here. What if, it, with the introduction of the CD in 1982, part of the design of the format would be the compression could be applied by the end user and how everything would be different in the sound of popular music? It, it kind of blows my mind just to think about it. It, I don't know if it was technically possible in 1982 for the CD to be designed that way because, you know, one of the good things about the CD is that it's an unchanging standard. The red book is the red book. It doesn't get updated like Blu-rays and DVD. And it's just a solid fixed format for the most part. You know, I guess there have been some changes, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid format. A 1982 CD will play perfectly fine on a 2018 CD player, a Blu-ray player, or a DVD player. They don't say unknown, checking, stable, spinning, scanning. No, they just play. You hit the disc, hit, put the disc in, hit play, and it plays, right? That's the beauty of CDs. But again, we're getting off the, the, off the mark here. Compression. Oh my God, yeah. Well, I'm just talking about from a musical perspective, how music would be better. It would be better if recording engineers and mixing engineers and mastering engineers weren't always thinking about how to make this music sound great for the lowest common denominator of people, the people who aren't audiophiles who are listening on earbuds or in noisy places. 
if that wasn't their prime directive, if they could think, no, people can listen at whatever level they want and hear everything we need them to hear, that would be, ah, that would be like, is it too late? Mm. You know, maybe for uh, files. Uh, but again, I don't know that mastering engineers or mixing engineers or the band itself wants to give up that level of control that they've always had, of control over how much compression is being applied to their music. I don't know. Again, if you're a band, uh, if you're a recording or mixing or mastering engineer, please chime in. Tell me what you think. Um, how would you feel if the end user could control the compression on the recording? I think that kind of does it for today, but I'm not actually done because I do want to thank my many supporters um, who make this YouTube channel everything it could be and keep it 100% commercial free. You'll notice there's never been a commercial on the head of one of these, these videos that I make and I'd like to keep it that way. So some people kick in some money here and there and those people are Barry Dickman, Jeremy Porter, Steve Morton, um, Andrew Ray, Jeffrey Blades, Dion Thompson, Roman Dudenoff, William Walsh, Brian Schroeder, Chris Russell, Dominic Kalinowski, Bob Vicentainer, John Hogel, Nicholas Cromato, um, Alex Van De Mint, Walter Winden, yeah, Winden, right? Uh, Jonathan Skull, Mark Pelleter, Steve Narone. I think I got everybody there. If I didn't, I apologize. But anyway, thank you guys for, for kicking in some money here and there. And uh, I think we're done for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.